All right, here we go. It's time for a San Francisco 49ers seven-round mock draft. All the picks, some trades as well coming at you. You know, uh, it's, it's come to my attention very recently that in, able, in order to have a YouTube channel in the year 2024, it's a mandate, actually, that you have to have a, a mock draft. And uh, uh, I, was, I received a message from YouTube headquarters that I had 48 hours to get a mock draft in here or else my channel would be eliminated and demonetized from all future business on the YouTube network. So I got to get a, a mock draft out here for the folks. And look, it's draft season, and it's a whole lot of fun to dream and think about who these players could be for the, the next generation of San Francisco 49ers, right? So let's get into this. Let's get a little mock draft action happening right now. Somebody in the chat says I'm a little tinny. I might have the wrong audio going. And, of course, I do have the wrong audio. And there we go. Thank you for that. And that should be a lot better. That's the correct microphone instead of the uh, the old computer mic happening. So Mike is now on, as is this San Francisco 49ers seven-round mock draft. I'm going to need a little bit of help from you guys saying yay or nay to some trades. Uh, I've got a strategy, an overall strategy in this mock draft that I am going to um, employ here. And it's something that I've talked about on Locked On 49ers. If you do not know what Locked On 49ers is, I'm the co-host with Eric Crocker, Locked On 49ers, daily on the Locked On Podcast net Network. Make sure you go subscribe there and uh, listen to that 49ers and, and watch that 49ers content every single day. Make sure you give me a subscribe here on the new channel. Helps out tremendously uh, to get this new thing going here. And yeah, I really just want to be loose on, on the new channel. Overtime with Brian Peacock, right? Uh, stuff that I don't have time to get into on Locked On 49ers. Um, OT can stand for off topic, whatever we feel like getting into here, we'll get into. And today it's going to be a live mock draft. And however long it goes is how long it goes here. There no rules on, on OT with BP. And I'm going to need some of your help here in the chat to see a bunch of folks already jumping in here live with me. So I'm excited about that seven round mock draft for the San Francisco 49ers. And yeah, as RDC says here. It's sicko season. It's draft season, man. We get a little weird when it comes to the draft, but I love it. I have a lot of fun with it, and uh, it's time to get this thing going. So let's get it up on the screen. We're doing the we're doing the Pro Football Network Pro Football Network mock draft simulator today because. Um, there's one part of this simulator that I like better than the PFF. Love the PFF simulator. Love the work that the folks over at PFF are doing. But when you're trying to figure out if you want to make a trade or not, it doesn't have the uh, the running list of the draft board of the people who are still on the board for you to take while you're making these trades. And you've got to kind of figure it out by who you see has been selected. So the folks at PFF have to clear that up. So for the, for, for, I, I want to make at least one trade in this mock draft. The 49ers have 10 picks in this thing. And I, I want to make sure that you come out of here with nine picks, I think would be good. Plenty of picks and the opportunity to be mobile and move up, maybe move down too, but I kind of want to get up in the first three rounds, but I don't want to spend a lot to get up. My, my idea here, and we talked about it on locked on 49ers. I want to, I want to, I want to use a, no more than a fourth round pick. Ideally. Now, if the right player is there, maybe, a late third, that pick at 94, the San Francisco 49ers have that late third that we could give up. I'd like to get three potential starting players or players that are early contributors in the first three rounds. But if the right guy is there and is in the right spot that the 49ers could get up and get utilizing a third round pick, that's okay. But the 49ers have three fourth round picks. I want to utilize one of those to get up. Maybe not even the first round. Maybe the second or the third round would be the right place to get up. Let's see how the draft board falls here on the Pro Football Network Mock Draft Simulator and get this draft going. Seven rounds, normal speed. San Francisco 49ers Mock Draft. Let's see how this thing goes. And it is Caleb Williams going number one to the Chicago Bears. Quarterbacks flying off the board. 
Uh, looks like the Vikings not trading up for their quarterback. Does this quarterback fall? And, oh, they did. Well, they moved down. What in the world did the Vikings just do? They moved down again from 11 to, all right, I got to pause this thing at pick 21 here. All right, so what just happened? The Vikings went down. They already had two picks in the first round, 11 and 23. Everyone thinks they're going to go up for a quarterback. They actually went down with the Packers. The Packers went up from 25 all the way to 11, which must have been expensive to draft a corner, the first corner in this draft, Terry and Arnold out of Alabama. So that's very interesting. J.J. McCarthy slides all the way to the Raiders at 13. And before you say that, oh, that's unrealistic and that could never happen, just remember the craziest mock draft you see in mock draft season is not going to be as crazy as the real NFL draft. The, the real NFL draft is absolutely nuts. At this point, two years ago, people were mocking Malik Willis number two overall to the Detroit Lions and ended up going in the third round, right? So um, don't be shocked by just about anything in the real NFL draft. It's not going to be as chalky as everything uh, that we think is going to happen with this group think as we get ready for the draft. So I paused at pick 21. In my opinion, maybe the earliest the 49ers would and should be willing to trade up. It's uh, a team that, you know, the coaching staffs know each other very well in Miami. The Miami Dolphins are a little bit light on those mid-round picks. Could the 49ers get all the way up to 21? Do they want to spend what it would take to get all the way up to 21? So, I <laughs> apparently uh, Mayoko put it at 92%. I, I did hear this theory from Mayoko. My reasoning for it that I laid out last week on Locked On 49ers was a little different. Mine was just purely strategic as far as having extra picks and getting up in round two or round three maybe to really solidify, you know, the uh, three players in the top 75 that, that you really feel good about here. But I think Mayoko's point was pick one, 124 is that pick from the Dallas Cowboys that the uh, that the that the Dallas Cowboys sent the 49ers for Trey Lance and that the 49ers don't just don't want to trade don't want to draft a one for one player that is like Trey Lance got us blank and it'd be like some backup player that's not very good or whatever and as everyone will be able to point to for the rest of history look this is the player that Trey Lance became for the 49ers so if you package him with the trade it's harder to track what that is and if you move up for a guy in the first round it's even easier so uh, and, and I like that reasoning from Matt Mayoko. I don't know if the 49ers care that much, but uh, he's absolutely right. People will be keeping track of what pick 124, ha what happens with pick 124 and if the 49ers do draft a player there. And we might trade it in this draft too, but for, for different reasons because I really don't care about that. Um, all right, let's go. We've got pick 21. Who's here? Let me know in the chat. Is, is somebody on the board that you're absolutely moving up for if they are there? On draft day, according to PFN here, we've got Jared Verse, Johnny Newton, Byron Murphy, Chop Robinson, Cooper DeGene, Graham Barton, Jackson Powers Johnson, Kool-Aid McKinstry. Those, those are the top guys on the board here. Um, I don't think I'm moving a third rounder for these guys. I like a lot of players that are on the board. I think we can go a little further and see who's there in a few more picks. And I think more likely than getting up to 21 and what the cost would be there, I'm eyeballing 26 of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as a spot to potentially make a maneuver. So I'm going to pause it right about there and then we'll see where things are. I don't know if the Vikings are moving down again. They've already moved down a couple times. They did draft Kool-Aid McKinstry, who I'd definitely be interested in for the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, pick 26 now. The 49ers pick is up in five selections. Or there's going to be five players off the board before the 49ers are up sixth here from 26 to 31. Jared Verse, very good player. Johnny Newton, Chop Robinson, Cooper DeGene, Jackson Powers Johnson. I don't think I'm moved. I don't think I'm moved. And I'm looking at who will likely be there. You're going to get one of six players. I like Suamata Ia. I mean, I like Jordan Morgan. I like Darius Robinson quite a bit. One of those guys is going to be there. And maybe one of these guys at the top will still be there in six picks. So I, I'm not going to move. I, I'm going to save that extra draft capital that I'm planning on spending to go up. I'm going to go up later, maybe round two, round three. So that's the plan for me right now. And I like the way this is going so far. So let's check this out. Chop Robinson, Kingsley Suamata Ia goes at 27. One of my favorites. I'm kind of it's kind of a dark horse player for me for the 49ers. Now, look, the 49ers could go down, I guess, a little bit and even have more draft capital to move up later if they wanted to. I don't know if it's worth, say, getting a fourth, fifth round pick to go down five spots into the top of the second round, and then you lose your fifth year option. 
Uh, so I don't want to go all the way down to 54. I don't know if our guys are going to be there that we're looking at drafting here at 31 still. I'm not going to move down unless I really think one of the guys I really like is going to be there. 76, that's going down too far. Seattle, no dice. All right. We're sticking at picking. Pick 31. I mean, the best guy on the board here is Johnny Newton, uh, according to PFN and according to me as well. And I don't see a tackle that I love. Darius Robinson, Johnny Newton, Jackson Powers, Johnson, and then Cooper DeGene. I think I'd put him in that order of the top four for me here. And I, I'm tell you what, guys, I think Johnny Newton's going to be my pick here for the 49ers at pick 31. And I didn't check in with the chat and make sure it's okay. All right. At least I see one person at least that likes Newton. We've got to vote for JPJ. We got a note for uh, Joe and uh, a vote for Johnny Newton. Cooper DeGene. Let's see. Largest need where we can get a starter right here would be DeGene. I can kind of buy that, but I think there's enough corners in this draft where you could go up a little bit later and still get a guy. I don't know if there'll be, uh, there, there might be a, some interior rushers that are pretty decent a little bit later on. Um, a couple of votes for JPJ. I like Jackson Powers Johnson a lot. And I'd be fine with the pick at 31. I just think there's too many interior guys that you can get in this draft and too many center types that you could get. Uh, but he's right there. I mean, he's he's definitely in my top three guys that I would pick here. I don't think you can go wrong as uh, the crazed Niner fan puts it. I agree with you. I'm going Johnny Newton. I think it's the best player. And, and I'm not going to pass on him. Darius Robinson is, is very enticing, as is JPJ. Kingsley Suamata Ia is gone. I think he's my dark horse pick for the 49ers at 31. Definitely not taking Bo Nix. Thank you, uh, Tony. <laughs> uh, so here we go. Johnny Newton, the pick for the San Francisco 49ers at 31. Pass rushing defensive tackle. They don't have long-term answers on the inside there. Johnny Newton out of Illinois. By the way, I think his pro day is coming up in the next couple of days. And uh, the guys I like are going flying off the board there. All right, so I might make, I'm going to pause it here in a little bit because oh Darius Robinson he lasted to 40. That's a that's a really good pick, a player I like a lot in that uh, late round one, early round two area. Max Melton, oh he was going to be a trade up target for me, getting a little lean now when we're looking at offensive tackles, when we're looking at cornerbacks. Uh, pause it here at 54. This would be the first pick in this draft for the Cleveland Browns. So would they want to move around and add more picks? Talked about the Dolphins as potentially being a team. I think the same story goes for them at pick, at pick 55 in the second round is, uh, as it would at pick 21 in round one. So this is about the area where I, I think the 49ers could get up and get a guy. Not trading up for Michael Penix. Ruka Roro, I like a lot. Uh, Cooper Beebe, he's a fine player. I don't think I would target him here. Adrian Cooper, really good linebacker. Don't know if that's the direction to go for the 49ers with a selection like this. Um, Chris Jenkins, I like a lot. I think uh, some of these guys are just going to kind of fall to where the 49ers are already. Roman Wilson, I like quite a bit. Brandon Dorless, I think he's a really good fit. The 49ers have met with him. Uh, some some decent wide receivers down the list here a little bit. Um, gosh, you know, the corners flying off the board, though. The corners are flying off the board. Let me let me double check with the corners and just see exactly what that list looked like. Mike Sanders still is there. I'd, I'd probably prefer him in the third than to... And to move up and do that right now. Kamari Laster, I like. There was a lot of nickel corners in this draft. All right, I'm, I'm not making a move there. I, you know what? I, I think we're going to stick here. I think round three. Round three is the round to go up. And we've already done defensive tackle to the players I like here. Maybe that's the reason you don't go D-tackle is you got guys like Ruka Roro, Chris Jenkins. Uh, you got... Brand Dorless, all potentially available near pick 63 for the San Francisco 49ers. Let's see what it looks like in the offensive line. Rosengarten, Karen Omegaji scares the crap out of me. Um, tackles go quick, man. They went quick in this mock, and I think they're going to go quick in the real NFL draft this year as well. So uh, we're, we're going to press our luck to see where, where things land with the 49ers at their original selections here in round one and round two. Coming up on pick 63. Oh, I hate this. I hate this because went D tackle in round one. And now there's two really good interior defensive linemen that are on the board for the 49ers in Ruka Roro and Chris Jenkins, who 
would probably be my two favorite selections at this spot. A couple of wide receivers I really like in Malachi Corley and Roman Wilson. Uh, Brandon Dorless as well. Okay. Let's log this one. Maybe, maybe D tackle is not the way to go in round one. If it's close, if it's a tie. And I think if it is a tie, you go offensive tackle for this very reason. Uh, and maybe even you go corner. If, if it's Kool-Aid and Johnny Newton, maybe you go Kool-Aid knowing that much better chance you can get a defensive tackle in round two than uh, a starting caliber cornerback. Any wide receiver still there? Yeah, we're looking at Malachi Corley. I think these are the four. Malachi Corley, Roman Wilson. I mean, Ruka Roro could play end as well. So that's definitely a possibility. Chris Jenkins, yeah, I mean, I think we kind of got to go wide receiver here, I think, with the way this fell. Let me double check a little further down the list, make sure there's not someone sleeping that I'm missing out on. Yeah. I mean, next Debo, I think I'm going to do it. Malachi Corley out of Western Kentucky. I mean, I think he can absolutely plug into a kick returner, wide receiver for Ray Ray McLeod type of role on offense in year one. And I really do think there might be some some potential for trades next offseason with Debo Samuel. This could be the last ride with Ayuk and Debo Samuel together. And you got yourself a, a brand new, fresh wide back next year to employ as potentially wide receiver two, wide receiver three, if he develops like I think he can. Malachi Corley, 5'10 and a half, 215 pound, built very similar to Debo Samuel. He ran 4.47 at his pro day. You see him run over guys, run away from guys in college. Nobody had more yak yards in college than Malachi Corley, and he's the pick here at 63 for the San Francisco 49ers. All right, so we're going to have to pause this thing because I'm coming back up. I'm coming back up for somebody in round three. This was my plan. I'm going to utilize that fourth round pick to come up and get somebody. Pick 74, 75, 76, maybe, maybe early 80s, I think, is where we could have some action here coming up from pick 94. What could a fourth rounder get the 49ers? Could a fourth rounder get them all the way up into the 70s here from 94? Roman Wilson, I still like. Ruka Roro, I still like. I hate how the board has fallen here because those positions we've already drafted and those positions are the ones that fell into the early portion of round three for us to go target and go get. Roger Rosengarten. What do you guys think about Roger Rosengarten? I wasn't blown away by the tape, but that's because people were billing him as poor man's Joe Staley. And I didn't see a late first round guy. I didn't see a second round guy. But I did kind of see a third round guy and he's still there. And if you're looking at someone who could maybe play inside, maybe be a starting caliber offensive tackle in the NFL, does have a ton of athleticism that he showed off the combine. He at times looks really schooled as a tackle at Washington. Uh, but then at times, you know, he, he lost too often. They don't put on the tape of the national cha championship game if you want to like Roger Rosengarten. But I think he is a good enough prospect to be drafting here in the third round, potentially even moving up for because he has – the physical ability. And I would say the same thing about Karen Omegaji once you start to get in the third round. I don't like him in round one or round two as much. There's just not a lot to go on. And he's going to have a, a pro day finally here. You know, and he beat up on the competition at Yale, but didn't get to see him at the Senior Bowl. Didn't get to see him do any workouts yet. Kind of want to wait to see what those workouts are. Then maybe you're in business in round three. But let's wait. I'm going to wait till one of those tackles goes off the board. And then we're going to maybe make a move up to get a, you know, just a raw developmental with athletic ability tackle potentially in round three. All right. I'm going to watch closely. I, I don't want him to go off the board back to back and we miss out on an opportunity to get up. We'll let the, we'll let the gods decide which one we try to trade up for. Oh, scared me for a second. Oh, Rook. Rook went to the Pittsburgh Steelers, 84. He's not lasting that long, man. I don't, oh, there he went. Karen Omegaji went to the Cleveland Browns at pick 85. Roger Rosengarten still on the board. Let's go up and get an offensive tackle. Let's go up a few picks. I don't think this should cost too much. This is absolutely something the 49ers could pull off here. So we're going to try to trade with the Dallas Cowboys, our old buddies that now for some reason, 49ers and Cowboys are pulling off trades with. So what's it going to cost? I don't think it's going to cost all that much. I'm going to throw down one of these. Uh, let's see. Four, three thirds and a Fifth and a sixth. A sixth is not enough, but you know what? It's the Cowboys. So I'm going to lowball them first and see what happens here. N 94 and 211 for pick 87. Okay. They didn't like that. It's all right. I didn't expect them to take that trade. 
wasn't the Cowboys. I would, uh, that was disrespectful of an offer on my part. Uh, I wouldn't even offer it if it wasn't for the Cowboys. <laughs> All right, we're going 94 and 87. Uh, 94 and 176, the final of the, oh no, that's the fifth rounder. Fifth round pick? That's fair. To go up seven spots? Come on. Let's go, Cowboys. No, no dice. They're not having it. Cowboys don't want it to work with us, but that's okay. I said I was cool with doing a fourth round pick, and I was cool with doing one of the early fourth round picks. It's going to be the last fourth round pick, and I think this one's going to get it done to go up with the Cowboys and get an offensive tackle. A developmental offensive tackle could compete early, could compete at guard, could be a swing tackle as a rookie. And look, he he could take the job from Colton McKivitz week one, too. I mean, that is a possibility. Colton McKivitz is now a, a seasoned veteran in the NFL, has a full year of experience under his belt as a starter at right tackle, so he's not going to give the job away. but He's not as physically gifted as someone like Roger Rosengarten is, even though Rosengarten has some work to do as well. So we're going pick 94 and pick 135, the last fourth rounder, fourth round comp pick that the league screwed us out of. Should have been a, a third round pick, in my opinion. Uh, Jimmy G. Thanks, Jimmy G. And uh, his, his weird contract situation. All right, here we go. That trade has been accepted. And we're going to go up and go with Roger Rosengarten to the San Francisco 49ers at pick 87. And now there's people trying to trade with this. Didn't you guys see we just made this move to come get here? Why are you off the wrist trades? Roger Rosengarten, 87 to the San Francisco 49ers. All right. As this thing rolls into round four, here's what we got through day one and day two of this mock draft. Illinois defensive tackle Johnny Newton, Western Kentucky wide receiver Malachi Corley, and at pick 87, moving up a few spots to get, I think, one of the last, like, Guys, I think will be potentially a starting offensive tackle. My comp actually for, for Roger Rosengarten is Ezra Cleveland, who was a college tackle, who tested off the charts, really athletic, has had a nice career, but he's had a nice career in the NFL as a guard. And that might be Rosengarten too, but that's okay. But I want him to fail at tackle first. And I think that's what happened with, with Ezra, Ezra Cleveland. I can't remember how the beginning of his career started, but he ended up being a guard and a pretty good one. He's gotten paid a couple of times. So uh, Roger Rosengarten, is our developmental tackle. Now, right away, right away, I see some guys I like here at pick 124. Niners are back on the clock in round four. Makai Wingo, defensive tackle. We already went undersized pass rusher, so can't go there. Uh, Jalex Hunt, super athletic, small school, edge, Houston Christian. I actually don't love the tape, but he's got a ton of athletic ability to work with. A couple of running back. I mean, Jalen Wright. Jalen Wright, to me, looks like the second coming of Raheem Mostert. I mean, he's a fantastic fit. and I'd have no problem in round four. I mean, we're talking day three now. That's where you'd start drafting running backs. I think he'd be a big play weapon, great fit for the outside zone. One cut, put your foot in the grass, and hit that seam, and he can take it the distance. I like Jalen Wright quite a bit. I might shock some people going running back in my mock draft because I uh, badmouth running backs all the time here. The Newt says, very nice draft. Thank you. I mean, this is the, this is the, this is the play. Don't forget Sanders still. Sanders still is no longer on the board, uh, but he's absolutely a guy that I think in that third round range, if it would be a, a trade up for, or even just taken at pick 63 at the end of round two. I mean, he's he's the best nickel, just pure nickel in this class. He's not a guy that is like, oh, maybe outside in like some other prospects I like. He's like, okay, this is a, a pure nickel. Love the way Sanders still plays. That's a, that's a great call there, helmet to helmet. Let's see. Um, right. We got to vote for right. At 132, I'm okay with it. You need a stable of running backs. Kyrie Jackson, vote for Kyrie Jackson. Solid in round four. Theo Johnson, the tight end. Let's see. What's, the 49ers have been sniffing around tight ends. Let's see who's there at tight end right now. Theo Johnson is there. Jaheim Bell, yak monster. Love Jaheim Bell a little bit later if we don't go tight end right now. Tip Ryman. Niners have been looking at that Y inline tight end. A guy that can block. Tip Ryman is that. Uh, I, I like this area. I like the fourth round for tight ends if the 49ers want to go there. I don't know if Theo Johnson is going to make it this far just because of how well he tested athletically, and he is someone who could come in and play that inline wide tight end. I think he's a perfect fit for what the 49ers want. So right now, I like that in the chat. Theo Johnson. We're talking Theo Johnson versus Tennessee running back Jalen Wright. Big play running back. Can't have too many running backs in your stable. Love the third round running backs. It's where you start drafting them. 
A corner would be perfect if someone was still there, and Kyrie Jackson is, as was pointed out in the chat. Shao Smith Wade is a nice player. Uh, Dequan Hardy out of Penn State. Um, I could see Kyrie Jackson. I could see Kyrie Jackson here. 6'3", 194, longer, outside type of a cornerback. Don't love him. Jalex Hunt, I mean, you're just... You, you're just... It's just a lottery ticket with Jalex Hunt. Does, does he develop that physical ability that he has? Niners are looking at safeties as well. None, nobody blows me away there right now. I don't like how the cornerback board has fallen for the 49ers here. Should we go running back? Throw Kyle a bone. Jalen Wright. Here's the other name right now. We just drafted a an offensive lineman, but Mason McCormick is absolutely worth this pick, and he might be more of a center. So if you say, okay, we're going to cross-train Mason McCormick at Garden Center as a rookie. We're going to cross-train Rosengarden as a swing tackle, maybe some guard as well, and then hopefully you have a future center and a future tackle, or Jalen Wright, or Theo Johnson. Those are my three. We're going offense here with this pick. Again, we're going to go offense back to back to back here. Jalen Wright running back, Mason McCormick, South Dakota State. He's a stud. Um, hit all the athletic points you want. He dominated his competition, although it was FCS. But for the fourth round, I mean, I love Mason McCormick. Theo Johnson, Penn State tight end. What do you guys think? Theo, see a lot of Theo. Double O-line, O-line, O-line. Okay, it looks like... Lay Okay, will we carry four running backs? I don't. Someone's gonna get hurt at running back. You don't worry. Like you need six running backs. Great point by RDC. One of these guys might still be there for the 49ers after we make a selection here because we got multiple picks. We we traded one of those threes, so uh, we still have two of those. It's a little bit of a gap though. How many picks is it? It's uh, that's only six picks until the next third rounder. You know what? Let's make a trade. Let's go back to back. <laughs> Why not? Let's see if we can trade here. I like this. Uh, okay, okay, okay. We're proposing a trade. The Bucks are next. Let's see if we can get up to pick 125. Then we'll get two of those three guys we want. I think one of them might make it there anyway, but. Who am I trading with? I already forgot. It's the Bucks. Okay. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We want 125. And we're giving up 124. Plus a sixth rounder. To go up a handful of spots in round four. That should be plenty. Let's go. There it is. That's been accepted. Oh, wait a second. What did I just do? I didn't want to do that. That's all right. I don't know what I just did. I meant to go get 20. Uh, uh, I meant to trade up from the other pick, not the current pick that I was on. Didn't matter. Didn't matter. Now we're just one pick. But I gave up a pick to do it. Uh, I should have checked the chat before I did what I was just doing. All right. Anyways, that was ridiculous. Okay. So. A bad click on my part. I meant to go trade the other fourth rounder up, and I ended up trading the pick I was on the clock with. So I just went back one spot, which is just idiotic on my part. All right. Uh, Jalen Wright. I'm going Jalen Wright here. Running back out of Tennessee. Now the question becomes, when well, I was too late to trade up, so I, I just said <laughs> a pick. All right. Uh, Jalen Wright. Running back Tennessee. Elijah Mitchell can't stay healthy. It feels like Kyle Shanahan doesn't love Jordan Mason. Home run hitter. I think, he, I mean, come on. If you could have a rookie version of Raheem Mostert, I would like that in round four. Pick 125. I mean, come on. I want Mason McCormick, though, too. And I kind of want Theo Johnson. Let's see which one goes off the board first, and then we'll trade back up. How about that? Let's see if one of them gets to where we are. Okay, Mason McCormick went to, ah, see, Baltimore Ravens. That's a very Raveny type of a pick. 
Uh, we press our luck. Two more spots. See if Theo Johnson's still there. We should not push our luck. Yeah, we'll we'll yeah, let's trade. Let's trade. Come on, let's have some fun here. I'm gonna have fun on the simulator tonight. Let's go up a couple spots. There's no rules. There's no rules on OT with BP. That's the only rule. By the way, make sure you like and subscribe to the new channel. Help me out tremendously. Appreciate everybody who's in the live chat right now. Appreciate everybody who watches later as we go through this mock draft. Live mock draft. All right, we're going with Washington. Yeah, we don't want the stupid Chiefs drafting the guy right in front of us. Let's go up a couple spots. All right. We're trading 132 to get 130, and you can have stupid pick 251. Seventh round pick. Come on. Let's go Washington. All right. Theo Johnson it is. Love it. I love the way this draft's going, even if I'm screwing stuff up. Okay. I mean, come on. If the 49ers draft ended and they traded all the rest of their picks and ended up ended up only selecting five guys in this draft, and it was Johnny Newton, Malachi Corley, Roger Rosengarten, Jalen Wright, and Theo Johnson. I mean, come on. That's a ton of future firepower for Brock Purdy that nobody's pressured into being a big-time contributor right away for the 49ers. This third, this fourth, fifth round area is just a sweet spot for tight ends. Jaheim Bell still on the board. Tip Ryman still on the board. If we didn't get Theo Johnson, I would have had no problem drafting these guys here. Um, you know, if we didn't screw up the trade earlier, might have gotten McCormick and then Jaheim Bell say, you know, double up, double up again at tight end. Apparently, the 49ers don't like the tight ends they drafted last year. Double up again. Get get a smaller bodied guy in Jaheim Bell. Get a big bodied guy in Tip Ryman. They got a small guy and a big guy in the last draft. As well, I still have some hope for those guys. Uh, but two more picks here for the 49ers, dude. I still might take. I mean, I, we should still do the big guy, small thing, small guy thing at tight end. Eric All from Iowa is a really good tight end as well. Jaheim Bell is a yak monster. I think he'd be a great fit for the 49ers as a split out tight end. Just uh, let everybody battle it out. Hunter Norzad, center out of Penn State, is the player I'm eyeing right here, like Ty- Tyrone Tracy, running back from Purdue. Maris Lufau is a pretty fun linebacker out of Notre Dame as well. Joe Milton. I would love to see what Kyle Shanahan did with Joe Milton. I don't think he would be his type, but how fun would it be to have a uh, a quarterback that can just chuck the ball a ridiculously long ways like Joe Milton? Olufacio from Washington is a linebacker I like quite a bit. I think I might be eyeballing Olafascio. If he's still there, a couple linebackers I still like. Dylan McMahon worked out really well, has all the movement skills you like for a wide zone type of a center. He's definitely someone you could see late. Uh, Sione Vaki from Utah, the safety. A lot of good players still on the board. Nehemiah Pritchett, longer-legged, sort of a speedy outside type of a cornerback. I can't believe we haven't had a corner yet. I mean, The, the, cor- the cornerback's just... It was awful the way the board fell for corners in this mock draft. Maybe should have made a a stronger play for Sanders still, maybe in the late second round, early third round range, potentially. Uh, But that was about the only spot where I really liked where there was a, there was a player there. And I still don't love anybody who's on the board here. Let me know. Al blades, junior. I didn't even realize Al blades had a son that was in this draft class, cornerback out of Duke. Wow. Loved Al blades back in the day. You know, I like, we traded away that late seventh round pick, but Quantez Stiggers out of the CFL is a really interesting prospect. I would definitely take him late in this draft at cornerback. All right. Uh, Hunter Norzad, the center, double up on offensive lineman out of Penn State, 6'3, 317. Let's go. And we'll see if one of the linebackers is there in round six to finish this off. And if one of those tight ends is there, we'll we'll double up on tight ends too. See if one of those guys falls to the 49ers. 
I got about 15 more picks to go. Pick 211 to finish thing up in the sixth round. Yeah. Really appreciate everyone jumping in, in the chat. Make sure everyone subscribe if you can. Help us out quite a bit here. Uh, RDC, need DBs. I know, man. I know. Need DBs. The, 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 it did not fall. The, the, the board did not fall. Uh, and maybe this is a lesson. The 49ers need to attack this in the first two rounds at cornerback. Because if they don't, there's not a lot there. And, and I thought there'd even be a better opportunity round two, round three for one of these uh, one of these nickel corners. And there, there just wasn't a lot I loved there either. Anthony Gold, that's a good call. I like Anthony Gold. He's one of the best. Uh, it's actually Gould probably, right? I think Robbie Gold is the only one that pronounces it Gold when it's spelled Gould. Uh, Anthony Gold is a really good kick returner. If you want someone just to replace some um, kick return ability, and and battle with Ronnie Bell for that role with the 49ers late. Uh, I love it. There is a, Anaya Smith is another one on day three that would be a good fit for the 49ers. Quite a few kick returners here now that I've kind of gotten in and, and look at some of these kick returners. Jamal Hill is another good one at linebacker, super speedy linebacker from Oregon, former safety. That's got tons of speed. The 49ers have, oh, he's not in this simulator apparently. So we can't go with Jamal Hill late in this draft because he's not even in the sim. That's how much of a sleeper prospect he is. The 49ers are turning over every rock they can to find prospects in this draft. Uh, Jamal Hill is someone that has met with the 49ers. Uh, a little undersized, six feet, 220-something pounds, but he can fly. And former safety can cover a little bit, so definitely like him for the 49ers potentially. Here we are. Brown, just looking at who? Yeah, and Aeneas Smith is one of the guys that just went, one of those return man types. And, oh, the linebackers went. Okay, so Olafascio gone. Maris Lufal gone. Where did they go? Dylan McMahon gone. So a lot of the guys we're looking at no longer on the board. Olafascio went right away. Okay. All right. Final selection. Kicker? No. <laughs> I'm mean, I might go tip Ryman. Just double up on Y tight ends. Uh, Anthony Gold looks like is not around anymore. Kingsley, the other Kingsley in this draft, Egukun, more of a mauling type of an interior offensive lineman. Frank Crum out of Wyoming. Norzad is gone. Drake Nugent. I don't know if those hardball linemen fit what Kyle Shanahan wants to do on offense. Let's look at the defensive side of the ball here. Miles Harden, Willie Drew, cornerback from Virginia State. Mark Perry, DeCamarian Richardson. Great workouts for him. I'm going to go CFL. How far down was he? Oh, he might be gone too. Oh, Stiggers. Quantrez. Quantez, not Quantrez, as in Quantrez Knight. Quantez Stiggers from the CFL. Man, he put some good athletic testing numbers out there. Looks the part. Got some professional experience now uh, up in Canada. All right, I'm going Quantez Stiggers. Got to get a DB in this class. If there's no other, I'm going to check the chat one more time as we go through this. Sam Hartman, quarterback. I can see Kyle liking Sam Hartman. All right, last call for votes in the chat. What do we think? Crum. Shanahan will probably love Crum just because he's 6'8". Well, it depends how much weight he's carrying on his 6'8 frame. Um, Storm Duck, best name in the draft. Absolutely. <laughs> Storm. That's worth a six-round pick for, for Storm Duck. All right, I'm going Stiggers. I'm going with the CFL guy. Let's go. I love the path he's taken. Love what I've seen from him. I think he's someone who can stick in the NFL. We're talking about six-round pick. Come in, play some special teams, battle for a roster spot, and maybe he's got a little bit more in there, and he's got all the physical ability to be an NFL corner. So we're going out of the, the Toronto, it's the Argonauts, right, in the CFL. Quantez Stiggers, cornerback, to finish up this draft 
for the San Francisco 49ers at pick number 211. So there you go. That's the haul. What do you think? Johnny Newton in round one. Malachi Corley, wide receiver out of Western Kentucky in round two. Roger Rosengarten moving up for him. Uh, we've got Jalen Wright, running back from Tennessee in round four. Theo Johnson tied in from Penn State. I mean, that's a home run draft in my opinion. Coming back with uh, Tyrone. Tr Wait, Tyrone Tracy. I don't even remember making that pick. I think I clicked the wrong button there. That was supposed to be... Uh, I, I, you know what? Maybe there's something wrong with the, did I really click the wrong buttons or is there something wrong with the pro football network mock draft simulator? I, I, I didn't Tyrone Tracy's a nice player, but that isn't who I picked at 176. Who was it? Who did I pick at 176? Now I forgot. <laughs> RDC says he watched me click the wrong thing and could do nothing. Oh, man. How many drinks so far? I've had zero drinks. I've had uh, sparkling water. Topo Chico is the only thing I've had to drink. Uh, Norzad, the center. That's right. Uh, Norzad, uh, the center, is who we wanted to take there. And uh, I, I, I just absolutely click, clicked the wrong button, apparently, twice in this mock draft. So uh, disregard Tyrone Tracy. Good player. I wouldn't mind Tyrone Tracy in that spot. But it's Hunter Norzad, the center out of Penn State, doubling up on offensive linemen in this class. And then Quantez Stiggers, cornerback out of Toronto CFL style. I love it. I love it. Uh, I'd be totally into this draft. I think I might do a couple things differently. Um, I would click better. I think next time um, and we'll try a different mock draft simulator next time too. And, and maybe I will uh, be able to hit the, the correct buttons that I want to hit, but man, I mean, dude, I wouldn't care anything after Theo Johnson, to be honest with you, those first three rounds. I mean, it's a home run draft, Johnny Newton, Malachi Corley, Roger Rosengarten, then you have uh, just some big-time upside offensive players in Jalen Wright and Theo Johnson. There it is. There is the San Francisco 49ers seven-round mock draft. Uh, Newt says it was fun. I hope you guys had fun. I had fun, too. And we're going to come back with a different draft strategy and do another one next week. Do a weekly mock drafts. There's only a couple of weeks left until the real thing. Next episode here on... Overtime with Brian Peacock, OT with BP, my guy from Locked On 49ers, Eric Crocker, will be joining me. And we're going to hammer out our official Locked On 49ers big board. It's going to be too long of a, an episode to do on the Locked On 49ers podcast. We keep those to 30 minutes daily. Make sure you subscribe to Locked On 49ers on YouTube and everywhere you get your podcast. Make sure you hit the subscribe button here to OT with BP as well. And we are going to go through a, a, a complete war room and hammer out a top 32, a big board for the San Francisco 49ers, probably go a little bit deeper towards like 50 players if we can, highlight the players we want the 49ers to draft and put them in order and hammer that out war room style. So look for that with me and Crocker here on the channel. I'm going to have more guests, more roundtables, talking 49ers draft before, after the draft, and a whole lot more. And who knows what else could pop up on OT with BB because remember, the only rule is there's no rules on overtime with Brian Peacock. That's what this channel's all about. There's no clock and there's no rules. Appreciate everybody jumping in with me and doing a little live mock draft. We're going to do it again. So I will talk to you then right here on OT with BP.